Thank you. Uh, next item of business is the minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any changes to the minutes or corrections? I'll make a motion to minutes be accepted as submitted. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next item of business is uh, item number 10A, uh, Aspen Grove 0122 LCC doing business as 210 nail wax and dry bar. And before we go there, do you want to uh, approve the agenda? What's that? You need to approve the agenda for. You are correct. My mistake. Everyone have a copy of tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve? I'll, I'll move a second. To approve the agenda. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Councillor. All right, now we're ready to start with Aspen Grove. Uh, and if I may, I will just enter into evidence Exhibit A, waiver of hearing and objections to process by which neighborhood boundaries and public hearing dates are set. Exhibit B, affidavit of posting of premises. Exhibit C, proof of publication. Exhibit D, liquor authority communication. Exhibit E, petition. Exhibit F, the public hearing sign-in sheet to speak. Do we have a motion to approve uh, to accept the exhibits? I'll move to accept the exhibits. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening. Hi. Your name, please? Tina McDonald Colburn. And you are? I'm the manager at um, 210. Could you spell your last name, please? C-O-L-B-U-R-N or M-C-D-O-N-N-E-L-L. Thank you. Thank you. Are you prepared to make a presentation as to uh, why we should approve your, your application? Yes, or sir. would you just like us to question you? I see your petitioner is here. That would be fine. Uh, however you'd like me to proceed. I'm happy to tell you about the concept and why we'd like to have a liquor license and what our protocol is, if that would be helpful. Would that be right. helpful? Okay. Um, I'm sure that you, uh, there's a question as to what a dry bar is. Um, it's a nail wax and dry bar. And what that is is that we do, um, we do nails, we do facials, waxing. Um, we're also licensed to do wash and blow dries, which is the blow dry concept dry bar. Um, we have opened these in Arizona and California, and the liquor license is just so that we can also sell a glass of wine when we have a service. Um, our pours, we've learned in the past, are three and a half ounces, and they're limited to one per service with a maximum of two. And the services um, are on average 40 minutes long. Um, and I guess that's about it. That's the basics. What made you decide to do this? Well, you know, we've done seven of these. Um, I've helped open seven of these throughout Arizona and California. And the investment group who owns this location, there's one primary owner. Um, the, uh, there's, there are a couple, it's very, it's valuable on a lot of different levels. One, um, women, the women who tend to come to our place of business, and also men in some cases, um, they're working, they'll come in after work, and um, it's nice to be able to offer them a glass of wine. We also find that when we have a bridal party um, that they would like to maybe celebrate with a glass of champagne. Usually that's divided between nine or ten. Um, and like I said, all of, our, um, all of our parties are a minimum of two hours long, 
and they're always uh, a maximum of 10 individuals as well. So we're able to monitor it. Um, and because we have done this in the past, we're very, we, we have certain protocols in place where they even ask if they'd like a glass of wine. Um, it's after they sit down, after they've already had their polish removed, if it's in the case of a manicure, and then they'll ask if they'd like to have a glass of wine. Like I said, it's a three and a half ounce pour, and then they're not asked again for another beverage unless they do go in and have an additional service, which might be a pedicure, which in which case lasts 45 minutes. Um, again, they might be asked if they'd like to have a glass of wine, and that is the last, they're only allowed to have two. And we have found that this, there's a huge benefit um, for the membership who belong and also for people who just come in and would like to have a glass of wine with their service. Do I understand that the glasses of wine are complimentary? No, um, not always. Um, they're uh, $4.50. Okay. Tell me about the training of your employees for serving alcohol. You know what? All, um, all of the alcohol is only served by the manager, which would be me. The employees don't handle the alcohol at all. What is your background in training? Um, I actually I have been a bartender in the past, and I'm going to be going through um, a uh, – it's not the TIPS program, but it's a program through Lakewood um, with regards to the distribution of alcohol for the state of Colorado. Plan on looking at the IDs of these people? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Our, our general, um, the general demographic of our um, client is typically 30 to 60. And we have actually a large um, contingency that's uh, above 60. Um, they like to have a glass of champagne occasionally, too. <laughs> so you're only going to be serving wine and champagne? That's it. In your other stores, how often, how many? What percentage of your clients would you say take you um, up on the offer? You know, we also offer um, sodas and water. And I have to say, at this altitude, we're finding um, a lot of people, they don't even take sodas. They'd rather have water. So um, I think in the other locations, um, California is a little different. Arizona, it depends on the day of the week. Um, during the week, it's probably less than 20 percent. Um, on the weekends, it might be just a little bit higher. But never more. It's not a party place. It's not, you know, you don't come in to... And we close at 7, so it's not, it's also not really the hours of operation that really encourage people to um, drink a lot. Looking at your floor plan here, where is it you plan on storing this alcohol? Um, it's stored actually under lock and key. Um, it, it, the place that we've got planned is in the um, office, which is right in between. Uh, you'll see there's a kitchen area. Um, there's a locked room in that, off of that kitchen, and then there's also a locked office area right next door to the facial room. In between the bathroom, uh, the front bathroom, and the um, wax room. Okay. So it's going to be in the area of the office. There's a place in there that you can lock this up. Yes, sir. And the um, wine cabinet that we've purchased, it hasn't been installed yet, but um, it has a lock as well. And we also have the ability to monitor whether or not that cabinet is opened. Um, when we aren't present and I actually receive a text should it be opened and I'm not present I receive a text on my phone and I know that it's been opened so we've got a lot of, of um, special things in place to uh, you know the motivation behind that was if the store were to be closed and an employee go back and decide to have a glass of wine or take a bottle of wine we do have these um, safeguards in place so that we do know if and they're aware of that as well that if they were able to open the wine cabinet which is locked but if they did open it after hours or um, when I wasn't there, that um, I would be text, texted and I would know immediately. Well, if they were able, if they come in there after hours, how are they able to open it? Who, where well, are they the keys? shouldn't be able to because it's locked. But we do have an additional safeguard in place should that happen. Do you keep the keys? Yes, sir. No, only one set. Only one set. Um, I have a, uh, what would be, I assume, a legal question. I was not able to ascertain what the relationship was between uh, the legal relationship between Aspen Grove 0122 uh, LLC and 210 Nail Inc. 210 is the parent company because we're in the process of um, getting together a franchise document for um, it, it becoming a franchise. Uh, we're looking at March. So the DBA is 210. The ownership group of this location is um, Aspen Grove 0122 LLC. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. the, the other question that uh, I did have, it was not clear for me from the on the legal opinion about the posting of notice on the premises because it left a blank, uh, the date blank and no indication that a notice 
was uh, placed on the premise. It was, and I think Michelle can speak to that. I'm sorry, say again, please. I, I'm told it was. Rochelle, do you want to speak to that, the posting? Yeah, we had a huge sign on the yeah, front window. It was posted window. on um, August 11th. August 11th, thank you very much. Uh, those customers of yours who choose to uh, purchase a, a glass of wine, how do they pay for that? Is that added on to the bill for your other services, or do they pay for the wine? Oh, separately. No, sir. Everything goes through. Um, we have an enterprise system, a computer system, where everything is highly monitored as far as um, the inventory, and that's one of the we get. We are actually able to get six glasses of wine out of one bottle, and so that is monitored and it is um, billed at checkout. Um, so it is. It is separate. So yeah. you you can keep track of the amount of wine that you sell. Absolutely. Thank you. Follow on that question. Can somebody come in and just drink wine and no, not? Sir. They've got to partake of the other services. What will your policy be on IDing people if someone walks in and they look like they're 75? Will they? Will you ask them for an ID? Um, I would imagine. I, I think that we're supposed to ask everybody for an ID. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that they'll be happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any further questions? Uh, uh, there's just one uh, matter, again, a clarification on the Colorado Liquor Retail License application. The very last page before Exhibit A, it indicates that um, 210 Inc. has 81% uh, interest in, in this company and then that the uh, uh, the the manager in parentheses you see this it goes up to 100 percent and uh, from looking at exhibit A what I take that to mean is that uh, apparently what Kurt Colburn has 81 percent interest and then the other 19 is by uh, three un uh, other individuals one of which is unknown at this time. Um, yes, sir. He owns 81%. Kirk Colburn does. Okay. And he's also the um, managing um, partner of the LLC that, uh, and president of the LLC. Okay, thank you. Well, if there aren't any further questions, I think we'll proceed to the uh, petitioning uh, report. Very good. This is Kelly. I, I see you got to the right place this month. <laughs> I know. I got to lean this down again. <laughs> Hi, it's Thank Kelly you for Peters. Up. <laughs> and my last name is spelled P I E T R S. And um, we were hired by um, Tenail, or, uh, to Tenail Wax and Dry Bar to do their petitioning for the needs and desires for this um, uh, beer and wine license. And in doing this uh, petition, we did it as we do all petitions, that is, that the uh, circulators had a clipboard on the clipboard, they had a map of the designated neighborhood, they had a um, warning sheet detailing the time and date of tonight's hearing, and signature pages on which they could sign either in support of, in opposition to, or neutral to the um, license at hand. In doing the survey, we did a total of 100, and, well, we did a total of 520 door knocks and received 156 signatures. Of that, we had 113 residents, 24 business owners or managers for a total of 137, which was 88% of those who signed the petition um, supported the issuance of the beer and light wine license at this premise. We did have 15 residents and one business owner and manager who signed in opposition. Uh, if you look on subsection C, we um, just did the survey. We kind of analyzed it in taking the neutrals out and with the two businesses that sign, oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, with the, oh, we, I didn't do this on this one. 
Um, so we also had on subsection C two neutral signatures and one um, neutral business signature. On subsection D, we stated the reasons why people did not support the issuance of the license. We had two people who had a general abhorrence to alcohol or for religious or other reasons could not be supportive of the alcohol or of the liquor license. We did have 12 people who stated there was no need, that is, that there was a sufficient number of outlets, and two people declined to state a reason why. So in looking at the needs and desires um, in subsection E, uh, based on the statute, uh, when you look at the needs and desires, we had 136 people who signed in support, 12 people who signed in opposition, stating no need, and um, that brought the survey up to a 92% um, support ratio. That is, I've been doing this for 15 years now, and as of October 5th, it'll be 16 years. And um, it is a strong indication that there's a need and a desire among the adult inhabitants for an additional um, beer and wine license at this location. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, at this time, is uh, there any discussion of the petitions and the results of the petitioning process by the members? Any comments from the city attorney? No, I don't, but you do have one individual signed up to speak before you close the public hearing. Uh, that is correct. My apologies, I missed that. Uh, I think we labeled that as an exhibit If I can F. find the sign-up sheet, we will get right to that. Okay. Uh, Paul Laird? You know, mine say that was an attendance sheet. I didn't bring it closely enough. I'm here for another sheet. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, and Kelly has already spoken. At this time, I'd like to uh, ask uh, for a motion okay. on this request. I'd like to make a motion that the public hearing be closed and a resolution of the Littleton Licensing Authority be approved, which grants Aspen Grove 0122 LLC doing business as 210 Nail Wax and Dry Bar, 7301 South Santa Fe Drive, number 342 Littleton, Colorado, a beer and wine liquor license contingent upon approval from the Colorado Bureau of Investigation and the Colorado Liquor, liquor Enforcement Division, and based upon the following findings of fact. One, that the needs of the neighborhood are not being met, and two, that it is the desire of the adult inhabitants of the neighborhood that the license be issued. I second that motion. Rochelle, would you poll the authority, please? Authority Member Bradish? Yes. Authority Member John Pohl? Yes. Authority Member Gunia? Yes. Authority Member Price? Authority Member Odell? Yes. Thank you. you are approved. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much. The next item of business is to be item 12A, the show cause hearings for uh, liquor code violations by International Marketing Corporation doing business as the Fat Frog Cafe. There is a motion to dismiss from the city attorney 
Yes, and this is our city prosecutor that put the motion to dismiss together. I can relay to you um, some of the reasons that she believes the case should be dismissed. That's for you to vote on. And, but keep in mind our separate capacities as I am advising you versus performing the city prosecutor role. But after further investigation, as you can may recall from the last meeting, there was some um, issues just surrounding probable cause. And after further investigation, uh, the city prosecutor was unable to find it, much more than the fact that a disruption of fight had taken place. Uh, she did determine, I think, that, and I was hoping Sergeant. Oh, Sergeant Steen is here. Okay, good. Uh, that Frat Frog is indeed the one who called about the bar fight. They, they were charged with over-serving, but when additional investigation was done, they were unable to, there were two bartenders apparently on duty. They were unable to determine if both of them had served. One bartender said, I only served one round of drinks to these two individuals. There were no eyewitnesses saying that they were appearing drunk or acting drunk and so really we were left it's my understanding with not much more than the fact that a bar fight occurred now sergeant steen do you have anything that you'd like to um include before they discuss the motion no. okay. like, just to be clear it was someone that is employed by the bar that carl called the police about the fight is that right can you confirm that for me yeah she'll come down to the microphone so that the people who are watching the licensing authority here. I did pull the records from dispatch on the tapes that were received. We had one phone call from inside the business. It's just unknown at this time who actually placed the phone call. We just know that it was a female caller. Um, the person was asked to stay on the phone so we could identify him and they disconnected. Was it from the a landline phone or is it from a cell phone inside? It's from a landline phone, but it's in an area that's accessible to everybody in the bar. But we're, we, we just were not able to determine who made that phone call. But it was the bar phone that was used to call the police? An inside telephone that's available for patrons and um, uh, people who are working there, yes. Thank you. Yes. I have one officer. Have question, if I may. Is it, is it not true from uh, the police report that two of the individuals that were served were observed by the officer to be not only the smell of alcohol uh, on their breath, but their eyes watery, red, and further that they were having difficulty even standing and weaving. Is that not the report I read? There uh, was some other addition that the officers noted in the report. Um, upon their contact, however, the problem was establishing the service and serving, and there were some um, receipts that were supplied, but the receipts did indicate that there were only um, one drink served to each individual. Just one drink served? That's what was located on the receipts, yes. But they would, serve, they would have um, served the one drink to individuals to an officer were visibly intoxicated, not able to stand without difficulty? There were no witnesses that were located in the bar that were able to say that that was the demeanor of the individuals prior to their being served. It's just that's what the officers noted upon their contact. Thank you very much. After, if I understand right, you know, after the incident, then the officer went to the hospital with him, and then while he was at the hospital, he requested another officer to go back and issue a citation. Do you have any idea why he waited till he's at the hospital before he asked the officer to go back and issue a citation? I did talk to the officer about that, and it sounds like when the call initially came out, it appeared to be a rather large disruption. They thought a that up to 15 people were involved in this disturbance. So as you can probably understand, a lot of officers responded and there was a lot of just um, chaos at the scene. And um, during that investigation, officers called away to another in-progress call that required everyone um, leave and so they kind of had to split their resources. And that's why then officers had to go back after the fact to finish their investigation. Thank you. Okay. Did you, did you uh, ever receive any reason why the, uh, the bartender, Christelle, didn't return the, police, the uh, officer's call? No, I did not.
there any further discussion? Well, I don't know. If I'll have to ask the city attorney. Can is it uh, proper for me to ask if we have a history on anything or any kind of a? Yeah, that is re relevant. I I don't think necessarily to this charge. It's certainly relevant to any discipline that would be rendered against the bar. And to my knowledge, they do have a history. We can give you a copy to look at. It's between 05 and 2010, so there's several violations. Do you want to give them a copy of that? Uh, Councillor, our, as I see it, our, our options here are to, uh, by motion, I suppose, approve your motion to dismiss or to request the show cause That's at, right. at a future time if we feel that That's right. this is not sufficient That's to dismiss? That's right. Okay. Okay. So we understand that correctly. And just keep in mind when the city prosecutor is reviewing any case, whether it be in municipal court or before the licensing authority, they have the discretion to weigh the evidence and our city prosecutor did not believe that she had enough evidence to go forward. But again, it's your order. So if you want to set it for a show cause hearing, you can do that. Uh, to go forward with, you mean criminal charges of some kind? To meet the standard of review. Uh, go ahead. Uh, at, at the appropriate question. time, yes. Is there anything else to discuss we want to hear? Did, did you wish to speak on this? All right, would you please come forward then? Do I need to say my name? Yes. My name is Paul Laird. I'm the owner of the Fat Frog. Um, let me speak to you a little bit about whenever an incident like this happens, I review it um, and to see what I think the facts were. I've had several conversations with the city attorney about this incident, um, and I think we're both in agreement on what happened that night. Um, and I didn't, because of my phone conversation with her today, I didn't bring any of the tickets or evidence that show what happened to her, and I wasn't aware that I needed to do that. She just told me that even though she was recommending that the charges be dismissed, uh, that I still had to show up for a hearing. She didn't tell me that we had to make a case. Um, and you don't. So, and when he's re referencing the city attorney, he's speaking about our city prosecutor. But keep in mind that if if they deny the motion to dismiss, you will have an opportunity to present your case. So this is not the time to do that. We're asking them to rule to dismiss it, and then you will have an opportunity to present your case if okay. they should go forward and set up for hearing. So I don't need to make a statement then? It, I think it's I think it's okay if you want to ask some questions. That's fine, but I think it would be better procedurally to have them rule on the motion and then reset it for a hearing and have you okay. present anything then. Okay, that's just my ignorance of procedure. I apologize. <laughs> that's okay. Are you saying he should not say anything, Council? Well, if you all want to ask him questions tonight, since he's here, that is fine. But. For his sake, he was concerned that he wasn't going to get an opportunity to present his case. And that is not true because if you deny the motion to dismiss, we would set it over and then he'd have an opportunity to present his case. Well, as originally scheduled, you would have had a chance to present your case because there would have been the show cause hearing, which the city now has asked us to dismiss. If we decide against that, then next month we'll hold that hearing and you'll be here to make your statement. All but right. he can contribute anything he wants to tonight. That's right. Voluntarily. If, but if you, if you would like it. to do that and you want to make, uh, ask him some questions, that's fine. You, uh, one, one question, you were not present in your establishment that night? I wasn't present, but I went back. Can you speak into the microphone, please? But I did go back and get quite a few statements and uh, from people that were present. I also searched the records of all the tickets where the alcohol was served. And it's your understanding also that the phone inside the establishment was used to call the police by somebody? It was, and it was, it was used by Christie. The report is wrong. It's not Crystal. It's Christie. Uh, she made the call. Uh, I disagree with the officer. The phone is not accessible to people that are not behind the bar. Uh, if there was somebody behind the bar uh, other than a, an employee, 
uh, it would not be. So she called the police. So she called the police. Um, the tickets that we that I went back and researched, the gentleman who started the problem arrived at 10, left at around 12. You know, obviously with police escort, they had a party of seven. They were served two rounds within that period of time. Uh, the gentleman that was assaulted uh, had a ticket that was. Uh, had two rounds on it as well. Wasn't as clear on the time that he was, but it was sometime around seven um, until the incident occurred. The gentleman that uh, the officer cites in the report, we don't know who they were. Don't have a tab for them, um, so I don't, I can't comment on those on those two individuals whether they were served in the bar. If they were, I don't have a ticket for them, and I don't know. We've gone to great lengths. Uh, now to establish a system whereby when a drink is served, every person receives a tab, it's marked with a date and a time uh, so that we can track these types of incidents when they occur. By all accounts on the affidavits that I've been collecting, uh, this gentleman who caused the problem, no one had an indication that he was drunk, overserved, unhappy about anything, was there to pay his tab. I don't know what, it's very unclear as to what happened between him and the gentleman that was assaulted. I think Christy had to get off the phone very quickly because there was just a serious problem there. So um, that's the facts that I've collected so far. Uh, I do, uh, I, as I spoke with the city attorney today, if necessary, I'll collect affidavits and pre present them. But um, when I talked to her last, I guess this wasn't the time to do that and I just didn't understand that. In the police report, it talks about someone called a bar back. Yes, that's another issue we need to address. The bar back does not serve liquor. Normally, the bar back will not serve liquor. He can, but in this instance, we don't like him to serve liquor at all for <clears throat> the reason that he's not allowed to be on the register or present the tabs. Then you've got too many hands in the till. Um, so... When I questioned him, he said he had not served any alcohol that evening. He's a bar back. He's there to fill ice, um, you know, wash dishes, wash tables, get drinks, uh, uh, restock beer, restock wine, do things of that nature. That's his job. There's some reason that the bartender didn't get back to the police. I think, I, you know, I don't know that. I didn't ask her that, and I should have asked her that. I think she was... Um, Scared. I think she needed, felt like she needed to have an attorney. And what she did is she went out and got an attorney uh, because she felt that she hadn't done anything wrong or nothing improper. She didn't feel that she'd overserved anyone. And that's why she saved and presented the tickets. And just to be clear um, with staff, the, the two issues that we were looking at was whether or not someone was overserved and, and whether or not the call the call was made, right? Those are the two separate. Actually, I think they were only charged with over-serving. Okay. There were four issues. Oh, well, they also had the two criminal charges, the disorderly and. Um... But disorderly in and of itself, I mean, if that took place in their bar, that's not a cause to. Well, it's certainly factored into the probable cause determination. I mean, if there's something like that with the totality of the circumstances, it can give rise to uh, to the probable cause. So at that point in time, it was relevant. It's not relevant to the over-serving, although, again, with the totality, if you had eyewitnesses saying he appeared drunk and went onto the bar and the bartender served two drinks very quickly, that sort of stuff would give rise to the violation. Appreciate you coming you. forth and providing Thank information. Thank you. Is there any uh, discussion among the authority members before we uh, before I call for a motion? I'd like to uh, make a motion that the authority uh, approve the motion in the city attorney's office to uh, dismiss this uh, show cause hearing. I'm sorry. 
After further review and investigation, there is insufficient evidence for the licensing authority to conclude that there have been violations of the liquor, Colorado Liquor Code and that therefore the allegations against the International Marketing Corporation doing business as Fat Frog Cafe located at 2540 West Main Street shall be dismissed. I'll second it. Rochelle, uh, would you poll the members, please? Authority Member Bradish? Yes. Authority Member John Cole? Yes. Authority Member Gunia? Yes. Authority Member Price? Yes. Authority Member Odell? Reluctantly, yes. And I hope to never see Fat Frog here again. If you, you want to come up and is, we're, this is on channel eight, and so you can't hear unless you're in the microphone. Um, this is what uh, Patricia and I were speaking about. One of the things, um, quite frankly, I'm just over the bar business. Don't want to be in it anymore. And I told her that in the event that I did find a problem, I was going to close the place down myself and sell the building. I still feel that way. Um, I am over the bar business. So we're going to have limited hours until we get this construction done. We are, this, these are our final set of plans. Uh, we've submitted them to the building department, not totally for review because they came back needing a little bit more plumbing information. Uh, I think within the next two weeks we'll serve them to the building department. They'll review them for three to four weeks. We'll begin construction on the kitchen. The bar will be dismantled. We will, be, uh, we will have a liquor license. It, um, but it will be to serve wine uh, we w and, and more for the family style operation. Uh, I have no desire to have a happy hour ever again in my life, to tell you the <laughs> truth. Um, so we'll be serving uh, fresh burgers, uh, fresh salads in, in, in bowls with all fresh kinds of dressings, and we're going to serve. Uh, we owned a restaurant in, in Denver for 20 years. By the way, we never had one liquor violation there. Um, we owned it for 20 years and we served the best of our Mexican food. So we will serve a contingent, not a full menu of Mexican food, but a contingent of burrito type things and crepe desserts and cupcakes like things of that nature. We will be applying in the near future to the Liquor Commission to have a, our license extend to the front patio. And um, we hope that this will be an 80% food operation and a 20% liquor operation that closes down in normal restaurant hours. The bar will be more of a service bar. Somebody will be, it'll be a food counter. You'll be able to sit up there with your children and eat and have smoothies and have shakes. And just, we're making it a family kind of place. So if that gives anybody uh, a little bit more comfort, I know it does me. So the only question in my mind is how, how much I'm going to limit the hours between now and when that happens. And so we may have a, a period of time that we're, we're closed down between now and Christmas to get that accomplished. So, uh, Very best of luck. Thank you very much. I think you're going to really like it. <laughs> thank you very much thank for you. bringing us up to date on that. They will be serving my favorite thing, food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are no uh, show cause hearings for medical marijuana dispensary violations, or I should say center violations. Uh, I'm not aware of any general business that needs to come before the authority at this time. Well, there's an item on there if you want to discuss the medical marijuana ordinance changes that you the, the new ordinance uh, changes that we have to just received. I just wanted agenda. to ask, is this the same, is this exactly the same as the other copy you gave us? Yeah. Okay. There wasn't any updates or anything in here that I missed. I had one copy. I just want to make sure that this was the same yeah. thing. Okay. At this time, I don't, uh, I don't see a need for us to discuss the ordinance. Right. And you can look at the strike through and see the differences, and there's really not a whole lot. I mean, we anticipated what the state may do, so it's not that different than it was before. Is the um, one company that, uh, that we did not grant a license to, are they still doing business? There were two. One of them is uh, still operating technically, but they won't be a 
lawfully operating business for much longer? Well, the, they actually don't have a license. That's and the, right. the four that uh, we authorized to operate do have licenses because I just signed them earlier today. So That's absolutely okay. true. So the city will take some sort of action uh, against the one that's still operating when the city decides it's the appropriate time to do so? When it's... Is that where it stands? Yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to bring one item up for discussion. Uh, first, I will ask the city attorney. It's my understanding that uh, um, the state of Colorado has passed new laws in regards to medical marijuana and that uh, the city council <clears throat> has then uh, issued additional ordinance and gone back, look at things. There's essentially not much difference here, but the city council has gone back and issued a new ordinance. This is a new ordinance, correct? That's right. Um, that being the case, um, when we initially licensed the dispensaries, uh, we were presented with uh, and had about an, uh, an hour, not of discussion, but an hour from the time that was brought up till it was presented here, a uh, addition that we placed on the medical marijuana dispensaries, now medical marijuana centers. And uh, that was that, we, that these centers were not able to, even though state law allowed and the city council remained silent on it, we added that they were not able to accept customers within, what was it, a 35-day period? That's right. <clears throat> the only basis for us is a quasi-judicial authority and not as elected officials to put such a provision on uh, licensed businesses within uh, the city of Littleton would be we had the authority, one would suppose based upon uh, doing it as to the public, uh, public health and safety, is that correct? That's right. That being the case, that 35 day waiting period uh, goes contrary, I have never heard when we discussed or evidence how that went to either the public safety or health. Quite to the contrary, it uh, does quite the opposite. And it is in the state law now, the 35 day. The 35 days is now state law? Yes. Thank you very much, I need that clarification. And there's nothing further. Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to clarify. The state law is that medical marijuana dispensaries in the state of Colorado are not able to sell medical marijuana to someone who has submitted an application for 35 days. Is that correct? Centers, and yes, that's correct, unless there's a certificate of mailing showing the application mailed. So that would be a conditional registry approval, which is essentially what we, what the position of the city was. So that if you did have an application and that you had a certification of mailing to the Colorado Department of Health under state law, you would be able to obtain medical marijuana, is that correct? That was my interpretation, yes. And the city uh, then, this authority opposed, imposed the um, uh, additional burden on businesses within the state that they were unable to purchase that within 35 days. Is that correct? With, no, I think it was, I, I, I think that w the interpretation that the city took is exactly the language now written into House Bill 1284, and that is that there has to be the 35-day waiting period. But if you do have a certificate of, of mailing, mailing. That's right that you could in the city of Littleton go in and purchase and the, uh, the uh, medical marijuana center would be able then to sell that individual medical marijuana, correct? That's right. Thank you very much. After 35 days. 
Is that clear? <laughs> no, uh, I'm sorry, because you said the state law said that if they had a certificate of mailing, after they could... 35 days. After yes. the 35. Yes. Okay. I'm you either sorry, have to have a card or the mailing after the 35 days. I believe what she's saying, if the state does not respond within 35 days and you can prove that you mailed it, then they can go ahead and sell it to you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I was understanding, but up, <clears throat> and up until this point, individuals with the application and the uh, certification of mailing were able to go and obtain mer medical marijuana. I don't know, but that was our interpretation. I don't know if they were able to, if they went into a dispensary, but that was the interpretation that the city took. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, our just to follow up just r real quickly, on the 36th day, if they hadn't received the card, they cannot purchase. They can purchase. Unless they've got a certificate of mailing of the application, proof of mailing of the application. It's bizarre. It's a regulation under Amendment 20. How long does that last? I don't see the meaning of the 35 days then. Well, the meaning is you, you, you have to have something showing that you had a referral from a physician plus you sent in your application to the state. The whole reason I think it came about was because the state became so backed up that they couldn't process the applications. So rather than facing a constitutional challenge to the purchase of the medical marijuana, they created this 35-day thing plus a certificate of On the 35th of day, you can purchase. On the 36th day, you can purchase. You can't on the 35th. First 35 card days, you or cannot. Or certificate of mailing. Oh, I, okay. 35 days is the period in which you cannot legally purchase. That's right. Thank you. So for our purposes, our law and our, the conditions we put on the dispensaries track state law. Yes. It tracks it, exactly. Any other comments about that? Any more discussion? Uh, staff have any uh, reports? Nope. There being no further business no. Be before the authority, I declare this meeting adjourned.